Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Since Topaz Labs released Photo AI, I've been getting a lot of questions from photographers who aren't sure whether or not they should purchase Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI, or just purchase Photo AI. Because with Photo AI, you could remove noise, you could sharpen an image, and if the image is cropped, you could increase its resolution. Well, what I've been telling them is that with those individual apps that Denoy, that is Denoise, Sharpen, and Gigapixel, you have a lot more functionality. There's a lot more there. So if what you're doing is mission critical, you may prefer to use Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and or Gigapixel AI over Photo AI. But I mentioned that I would do a video comparing those products to one another. And in today's video, we're going to compare Denoise AI to Photo AI. In a future video, I'll compare Sharpen AI to Photo AI, and eventually I'll compare Gigapixel AI to Photo AI. So you can see the differences on how they go about doing what they do. Now, for this demonstration, I have this absolutely horrible image that I took a few years ago in Philadelphia, and I did editing to it. There is the before. As you can see, it's dramatically underexposed. And once I did some editing to it, you can see I had to increase exposure by 3.7 stops and I have shadows all the way up and whites all the way down and so on. So it, it's heavily edited as well. But what I didn't do is I didn't add any sharpening or no noise reduction at all. We're going to let Denoise AI and Photo AI take care of that. And of course, as you can see, I'm inside a Lightroom. So we're going to be using those apps as plugins. They do work as standalone apps and they do work as plugins in Photoshop as well. So without further ado, let's send this image over into Denoise AI. I'm going to right click right on it, go down to edit in, and then over and down to Topaz Denoise AI. And I'm going to take the default settings here, a TIFF and so on, and we'll just click edit. And Lightroom's going to create that TIFF file with those specs. You can see the progress bar in the top left hand corner, and then it will open up into Denoise AI. And I currently have Denoise AI set up in what is called Comparison View. Comparison View is where you see four of the different AI models at the same time. You can see in the top left-hand corner, that's the standard AI model. And what I like to do is I like to try to compare these AI models to one another, um, like an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, meaning uh, the standard AI currently isn't set to auto. So I'm going to put that on auto and let it re-render. And I'm going to compare all the different AI models to one another as they're set on auto. So standard AI is there, clear AI is here. That's not on auto either. I'll put that on auto. Uh, low, late, low light AI is in the lower left-hand corner. That isn't on auto either. So we'll put that on auto. And then severe noise is in the lower right and I'll put that on auto as well. And just looking at them, it looks like low light AI might be the best. And that's probably not surprising seeing as I underexpose this image by 3.7 stops. So what I typically will do is I'll look at these four. Now there is a fifth one raw. Now because I sent it as a Lightroom plugin, uh, we didn't send a raw file, we sent a TIFF file, but we'll, I'll check it any, what, anyway. What I typically will do is I'll pick the the worst of the four that I have showing. In this case, it's the standard AI, and that's not on auto. I want that on auto. Standard AI, and what I'll do then is I'll substitute it out with the raw, and I'll put that on auto as well and see what that looks like, and that isn't any good. Now again, this low light one looks best, but I didn't have that on auto either. Either that or it keeps turning off auto on me. Now oh, there it is. Okay. Let it render. Let everything render and let's just take a double look or double check. And it looks like that still uh, the low light and clear look pretty good. Um, I think the low light might be a bit better. There seems to be quite a bit of blotchiness right in here in the clear. So low light looks better. So typically what I would do is I'll click on low light, make that active. You can tell it has this blue rectangle in the lower left hand corner. Then I'll go into single view where I'm looking at this image all by itself. Now it has to re-render. And that might be 
a buying decision, meaning uh, you download the fully working free trials of all these applications and on your machine, on some machines, I know this is a fact, Noise AI runs very, very slow because it uses a lot of computer resources. And if it just runs so painfully slow on your computer that you just can't stand it, you may be forced to use Photo AI because it's a little lighter weight and it may run a little better. Now it looks okay. We have some weird kind of noise maybe spilling in over here on these pillars in the foreground, but the rest of the image looks pretty noise free. There's some noise kind of over in here. So typically what I'll do is I'll try to turn this remove noise slider up. It's currently on 39. What I'll do is I try to split the difference. It goes all the way up to 100. So it's around 40, you know, I'll try to go maybe around 60, 70 in there somewhere, let it re-render and see what it does. And we still have this kind of weird noise over here and over here. We may not be able to get rid of that. Uh, whether or not the image is pretty soft um, because of the smoothing and noise reduction we've done, we've done. There is some color noise as well, and I have color noise reduction slider at zero. So why don't we pop that up to around 30-ish and let it re-render and see what that does. And it still has this little patch of noise right here, a little bit right here, and a little bit over in here, but I'm not sure there's much we can do with that. So what I'll do is I'll just take remove noise all the way up to 100 just to see if it even can be like gotten rid of, and it can't. You can see it's still there. So what we'll do is I'll just tweak this back down to maybe 84, let it render. Now there isn't anything in here that needs to be critically sharp, which is good. Um, the reflections on the pillars actually look sharp. Um, I could recover some original detail with this slider. You need to be careful with that because that could reintroduce some of the noise. In this case here, it doesn't seem to be and it doesn't even seem to be recovering any of the original detail either. So we'll leave that around 20, I guess. We could enhance the sharpness with this slider. And bring that up quite a bit. And that's, you know, still have this kind of patch of noise here. A little bit over here. Actually, moving the enhanced sharpness slider to the right seemed to reduce this little patch of noise over here. Yeah, it's still about the same. All right, um, I'm going to say that's it. We still have kind of a little tiny patch of noise here, a little bit there, and maybe a tiny bit over in here and here. But other than that, I mean, it, it compared to what it was, by the way, there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So it did okay. So let's click Apply, and this will bring this image back into Lightroom. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to the raw file that had all the noise and we'll send it into Photo AI and then we'll compare the results. Uh, what I'm going to do here is very quickly, I'm just going to go here, I'm going to go to metadata and I'm going to rename this uh, denoise.tip. Okay, so we know that's the noise one. You can see in the top left hand corner it says denoise. Go to the develop module, I'll hit the I button or I key on my keyboard a couple times so we see that the noise is there. We'll go back to the original file. This is the original raw file. I'll right click right on it. We'll go down to edit in and this time we'll go down to photo AI. Again I'll keep the same settings we used for the denoise tip file for this tip file and it opens up here. Now this is more automatic. There's not as many uh, models. There's really no models to choose from. It automatically chooses a model that it feels would work with the image. Now looking at it, we still have kind of this patch of noise up here on the right. We have a little bit over here, similar to what we had with the other uh, application. Uh, but it seems to be, have this kind of odd blotchiness going on, and it seems to be less resolute, a little more like smoothness and blurriness to it. I could open up the remove noise. You could see it used normal. Let's just see what strong looks like. So we have basically normal and strong to choose from, and then we have a strength slider. And you can see this one, uh, strong isn't anywhere near as good as normal was. So we'll go back to normal. And maybe we could bring the strength down. Maybe it'll get rid of some of this blotchiness up in here. And it doesn't really seem to be doing that. 
Now, I, again, I, I picked an extreme example. And we're reintroducing noise. It looks like we have more noise over here and over here. So what I could do is kind of move this back to its default position, which was right around there. That doesn't look too bad. Now we have the option here of sharpening it uh, by turning this on. And we have two different options, motion blur and lens blur. We don't really have an option for the blur that was introduced when we smoothed away the noise, unfortunately. But we could see what these look like if they even do anything in this case. And let that render, and it looks pretty much about the same, whether or not that's on or off. So we won't do that. There's really not a person's face. There are people in the image, but not a person's face. Enhanced resolution is used when you're upscaling, so there's no need to use it here. You could see what it does if you feel the need. It's not going to hurt anything. But you can see low res, and this really isn't a low resolution image, so it's taking a little longer to enhance. If this was a lower resolution image, like it was cropped heavily, this might make a difference. Go to natural, just see what that does for the heck of it. And let it render, it's taking a little long time and really didn't do anything as I suspected. All right, so this is probably the best I could get out of photo AI with this specific image. So I have to save it to Adobe Lightroom, and then we'll compare it to the image that I sent into Noise AI. So hopefully you could see the difference. Uh, let's go to library module just to be stay with the tradition here. Whoops. I'm going to go over here, and we want to call this a photo AI dot tip. Okay. So that's the photoai.tiff one, and here is the denoise one. Now you can see the denoise one. Now let me zoom in up in here. You can see up in this area here, and let's go up here to view and lock the zoom position. So then when I click on the next image, it doesn't move. You can see how this looks pretty good. I mean, it's still very smooth. It's, you know, lost a lot of kind of the actual sharpness of when I saw this with my own eyes. And then you can see this one has this kind of weird lighting blotchiness to it. And I really couldn't get rid of that in photo AI. So here again is the denoise image and you can see it's there a little bit, but not as pronounced as the photo AI one. Now overall, let's uh, zoom in on a problem area. Like right in here, you can see how there was some noise in here. This is the denoise image, and we'll go here to Photo AI. There's a little bit more noise in the Photo AI. There's denoise, there's Photo AI, and one more time, there's denoise, there's Photo AI. Let's zoom out, come in over here. This is the Photo AI image, and you can see this is what I'm talking about, this kind of weird. It, it's actually... To tell you the honest God truth, I don't think that's actually noise. I think that's the actual um, grain of the stone, um, the granules of the stone that is coming through. But both of these applications thought it was noise and smooth part of it over. So you could see how this is all kind of smoothed over in these areas. That's the actual stone. That's actually not noise. So let's go to the other one, and you can see that that is pretty much, pretty much the same. I mean, a little smooth, more smoothed over in here. Kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, as my dad used to say. So overall, the sky, let's see if it looks decent in Denoise AI, and looks pretty much the same in Photo AI. So, I mean, this was, as you recall, a horrible image. Just a lot, a lot of noise as we look through. A lot of color noise, a lot of different noise throughout the image. The sky was the best, which is unusual. Usually the sky has the most noise. But you could see how there's just a ton of noise because it was so horribly underexposed. And both applications did a decent job. It's not something that I plan on printing and hanging on my wall or even sharing on social media, but it was good to use as an example uh, to show how both of these applications handle 
extreme noise, and how Denoise AI gives you more options. You have five different AI models to choose from. You also, each of those AI models, you could, uh, some of them have push buttons, or one of them does, uh, clear. AI clear has push buttons. The others have sliders. You could move to enhance sharpness, uh, remove more noise. There's also a slider for color noise, another slider for recovering detail. Uh, so you can move those in. So there's a lot more um, possibilities to get a better image, I think, out of Denoise AI. But Photo AI still does a decent job, and it's a lot faster. So if you're, let's say, in my opinion, if you're just a wedding photographer and you typically nail exposure, you don't have images that were, you know, 3.7 stops underexposed, uh, you could probably just to remove, you know, routine, ordinary noise, send a bunch of images at once and batch edit them in photo AI and get great results and then continue and finish your editing in an application, whatever application you use, it could be Lightroom for that matter, and uh, then call it a day, you'd go a lot faster. Even if you send them as a batch into Denoise AI, there's just a lot more options there. And as I mentioned, Denoise AI has a lot more um, overhead to it. It uses a lot more of your computer's resources. And some computers, it just will chug away forever when it's rendering images, and it takes a long time. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have a pretty fast computer, so, um, you know, I, I don't experience those great delays. So, personally, if I have an image that has some noise in it, and I plan on making a larger print from it, or any print from it, I would probably use Denoise AI. On the other hand, if I just have images that I'm sharing to Instagram or Flickr, and it would use photo AI because it's just a lot faster. So that's my opinion. I'll do a video where I'll compare a relatively blurry image and we'll send it into sharpen AI and then we'll send that same image into photo AI to see how each of those applications handle a blurry image. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>